Joe? Joe? Uh, uh, whoa! Uh, uh, are we recording Pop Bro. Culture Paradise today? Yeah, dude, what the hell are you wearing? I, I, I wasn't wearing anything. Um, that was my twin. Uh, John! Oh, yo, oh, your twin. <laughs> yeah. All right, this is exactly the type of humor you can expect in this movie that Joe and I are about to review. I'm the Easter Bunny puppy, punk. Deal with it. Hippity hoppity woof. Peace out. And he made Easter magical for this nice Jewish family. I don't know if magical was the word, man. I, th I thought we were friends going into this, and I can't believe you made me sit through 90 minutes of this movie. Sure. Who wouldn't laugh at a dog wearing bunny ears? Oh yeah, me. So you, the viewer, don't have to go through the same pain. Joe and I are going to break it down for you scene by scene so you can get the cliff notes because I'm not that evil. In a world where the it thing is always changing, sometimes you need a tour guide or two to help you find your way to pop culture's paradise. If you find yourself reminiscing or in need of a good recommendation, these two have you covered. And now, here's your hosts, Joey and Jeff. I don't want to watch this, and yet I can't seem to look away. It's got it all. It's got mystery, it's got romance, and it's even got a talking dog. It certainly has it all, and a long credit introduction. Joe, I find it nearly impossible to believe that that many people were involved in this production. There is no way. Well, what would you expect from Fun Family Entertainment? It was the fakest name I could have possibly expected for a movie. Like, this was just something that they made on their off time and they didn't want anyone to trace it back to anybody real oh yeah it was certainly made on their off time so we we open up the movie right we first meet russ he's a corgi super cute i love corgis to death this is me the name's russ uh we learn that he's not actually talking so your hype going into it if you can call it that about there being a talking dog has gone out the window but we do learn uh that we can hear his thoughts but only the viewers, not the humans in the movie. Well, here's the thing. I went into this movie like, all right, an Easter puppy. I've seen A Talking Cat, which is another film in this franchise, starring even the same girl who played Lucy. And I thought, well, an Easter bunny puppy, that's just cute. Look at the dog on this cover. But what's the very first thing that they tell us? Not the dog. I'm not even talking about the sickeningly cute puppy with the bunny ears who's not even really in the story. No, not at all, dude. <laughs> not at then all. Then I'm looking online, and the first thing I message you is, I'm like, uh, this movie's gonna be a problem, because they don't even know with their DVD cover of what the Easter puppy is. There's a DVD cover with a whole other dog. So the dog that's on the cover of the movie is not the dog that's actually in the film. Uh, so right off the bat, rocky start, but we're holding out hope, right? You never know how, this, how things could turn around. Hopefully finds a better story than the one I'm writing now because it's horrible. I tried to get Jeff into a talking cat, and if you've seen a talking cat, you know that Duffy the cat speaks with the little black bar over his mouth to simulate mouth movement. This time, we don't have to sit through that kind of special effect. How does Russ communicate with people? Uh, Russ just communicates to us through uh, telepathy. So essentially, you can just hear his thoughts. How talking without moving my lips? Well, it's simple. You're hearing my thoughts because for the next 90 minutes, you all possess the power of telepathy. Russ is a cute dog. He looks like he's a little bit on the older side, but Russ has the voice of about a six or seven year old boy. Uh, immediately, I got to thinking, this could have been casted a lot better if they used, say, like, Jack Nicholson is the voice of the dog or somebody like that. It could have made it a lot more interesting. For this budget, I looked it up. The, <laughs> I was like, all right, did anyone in this film ever work again? And you found Lucy, the girl who played Lucy, Allison Psycho, Seiko, her Instagram page. Yep. But the but yep. the little kid's speaking voice that Russ has, uh, he's kind of still in Hollywood, but he's a stunt actor. Ah, see, if I was that kid, I would have had my, my name scrubbed from the film because it would have just... You gotta think anybody that was really involved in this, it must have hurt their career going forward, no? No, they probably... A gig is a gig, I guess, bro. I don't know. You know, with some of these kids, I was like, there's no possible way this goes on a resume because it doesn't make you look good. And suddenly, the egg cracked open. Happy Easter! 
monster! I wanna die. Now, Russ is supposed to be like this sweet, innocent dog, and you're supposed to be like, oh my god, he's so cute. But did you get the feeling, like, throughout this movie, that Russ didn't want to be there? Like, he was speaking for the screenwriters who were also secondhand embarrassed by what they're putting out there? It's a magical egg. People will just accept it. Stupid people. Will you put me down, please? I'd really like to hide my face in shame. Yeah, <laughs> Russ was kind of like uh, throwing some, you know, throwing some shade at his humans. What do you think, Russ? Degrading, humiliating, cheap, lowbrow exploitation of a puppy for the sheer amusement of humans. Jennifer Diamond, uh, Russ was throwing shade at, who is a super weird character. We learned that uh, she's she's the owner of Russ. She's the best-selling writer. And she's wearing a wig <laughs> in the opening scene that we see her to get into character. Uh, and let me just say, exhaustingly long dialogue and super cheesy music when we first meet. Jennifer Diamond. Mrs. Diamond. She feeds me and takes me on walks, so I let her stay here even though she's a little weird. She's this best-selling writer, which I guess means that she makes a lot of money. Well, the whole movie started with super cheesy dialogue. The very first thing I noticed, I was like, all right, did they make their intro screen in Dazzle Windows Movie Maker there with the rolling eggs? And it just went on and on. And then when you get Jennifer Diamond, her dialogue goes on and on. Like, somebody on the set was probably like, she says she can improv. All right, cool. Can she fill out, like, two minutes to really make it seem like she's a great mystery writer? As a matter of fact, I do, Inspector. Would you like to hear my theory? No. Oh, and it sounds like the mom said crap out here. The murderer crept up to the victim. And, and, and you're talking about things going on and on and on, and there's a couple of scenes later in the movie that are even way worse. Uh, one of my first impressions was, it looks like this was shot by a kid who got a new camera for Christmas mm -hmm. and thought, wouldn't it be fun to make a movie? And what is an Easter bunny puppy? Anything you want it to be. Right off the bat, you have the homeward bound at a discount type feel to this thing. And you can really yeah. tell what's homeward bound with writing and actual creative people and a story. And then just the dog's thinking, the dog's saying <laughs> things. And then you cut to Russ and Russ is all like, what kind of stupid person would make a movie called Easter Puppy? Right, Russ? What would you do? Eat the bunny. I'd eat the bunny and then I'd eat all the chocolates and jelly beans. What is an Easter yeah. Puppy? I don't know. That's why I'm watching this movie. What is an Easter Bunny puppy, you might ask? What is an Easter Bunny puppy? Thanks for asking. Yeah, there's just so many shots of just the dog just looking around. Like, I was going to ask you right here, right now, to do a super cut of just Russ. Anytime he's on screen, just <laughs> looking around. And I guarantee you that will equal half of the runtime of the whole movie. There's this one shot, and I think they cut to it five times, reminded me of an old photo that, of my old dog, Kurt, where I took it from the outside of the house, looked at him, seeing him th look through our big windows out back, and honestly, that's what I saw when I saw Russ. Like, there's a shot where he's looking out the window, and they cut back to it, and they cut back to it. That one's right up there with the time she told her teacher I ate her homework. I want to go on the record. Eating homework paper is the equivalent of eating rice cakes. Then there's a few other things I pulled out where Russ is clearly bored. And you know, when you <laughs> film something, you're like, all right, I got the good take. I got him staring at the camera. And then the camera's still running and the dog walks off screen. I think they forgot to cut. She's writing something called The Case of the Red Slippers. And no, this doesn't have anything to do with Easter, but I thought you should meet her. I think they may have too. And then I don't know if you caught this as well, but I thought there were there were clips that were just like stills of Russ that they would let play and then they would let it reverse. I don't know if you caught that because like Russ is just there <laughs> hanging out and then his tongue comes out and he yawns but then the clip like stops and then it goes backwards and does the same thing. And I was just like, there is no way. Like who, who approved this? So with a movie like Easter Puppy, you have that thought, who made this movie? Why did they make this movie? And why do they make these strange choices? Like a dress montage when you first meet Lucy, 
where there's no right. montaging going on. Like, there's <laughs> one article of clothing. All right, you're supposed to change it to many if you're trying to impress this boy as you're going through puberty and adolescence, Ugh. even though she's like 25. <laughs> <laughs> right, definitely 25, but she's playing more of like the 16-year-old. So Joe brought up Lucy, who is the uh, the daughter of Miss Jennifer Diamond, okay? And Lucy uh, meets this boy, Jake, who uh, when Jake comes to the door, Lucy is wearing the Easter Bunny costume because he's trying to help her mom write, just like the gag I did with Joe here <laughs> in the very beginning. Lucy is embarrassed. How's it going? Good. I'm good, um, you know, just hanging out, taking it easy. Yeah. And then we cut to an egg <laughs> painting montage. And I told you before, these montages just got worse. This was entirely too long. And then I wrote down, seriously, <laughs> this montage has been longer than the whole film thus far. Uh, and then I, I wrote down, it is just looping <laughs> at this point and showing the same clips. And then I said, God, just make it stop. This thing ran forever, dude. Did you notice that? Oh, for me, I wrote down, what is this, a DIY how to create crafts and make your own Easter egg paintings on YouTube tutorial? That's what it felt like the whole time yeah. to me. This whole movie felt like it was stretching and stretching to get to that 90 minutes, even though to get to 90 minutes, I wrote, this is taking me a whole freaking day to watch right now. <laughs> Yeah. Now, the mom, Jennifer Diamond, needs Lucy's help because, well, unfortunately, murder mysteries just, they're not selling anymore. Jennifer, I hate to break it to you, but your last two Marble mysteries didn't do so well for the agency. The audience out there is changing. They like Harry Potter. They like Lord of the Hobbits. Which is kind of weird no. because later you meet a fanboy of hers who makes it seem like all the kids like these type of mysteries. I just wanted to say I'm like your biggest fan. Thank you. So, oh, so yeah. now why is her agent being like, here's what we need. We need you to write vampire novels because since this was made in 2010, gotta take a pot shot at Twilight. I gotta go. I have 15 vampire novels to get through. Which gets its own right. crap, but uh, I take a million Twilights over this. <laughs> Well, because they were actually they were made super super well, and so was uh, Vampire uh, Diaries for that matter. It, this whole movie is about taking pot shots at people. So nobody ever questioned how Rudolph got his glowing nose. I did. A reindeer with a nose that lights up. Come on, Lucy. What was it struck by lightning? When I told Jeff we were doing an Easter special, he goes, "Oh, like Peter Cottontail." Yes. And what does this movie do? insults Peter Cottontail. Have you ever heard the story of the Easter Bunny puppy? No. It's not that Charlie Brown holiday special or the one about the rabbit with the cottontail who parties all night and oversleeps. It insults <sighs> Charlie Brown. It insults the Grinch. It insults Frosty. The mom's whole point here is to be as Karen as possible, which is why she has that haircut. Like with the Great Pumpkin. What's a great pumpkin? Don't ask. You won't understand. Oh, dude, without a doubt. She is <laughs> rocking it, too. Something, something else, man. She kind of looks like a Jersey Shore housewife. Miss Marbles always gets her man. So she's like the opposite of you? <sighs> so she and her daughter are Jewish, as I mentioned, so they don't really know anything about Easter. So they can't really write this story, which is proposed to the, our writer, Jennifer Diamond, the Easter Bunny Puppy. The problem with an Easter Bunny Puppy, <laughs> besides being an Easter Bunny Puppy, is they don't know how to write this story. I think that's no. uh, symbolism for the movie itself. I'm a mystery writer, Cynthia. So treat this assignment like a mystery and figure out what is the legend of the bunny puppy. No, exactly. And to combat that, Miss Diamond makes her daughter dress up like a bunny. Uh, but Lucy gets herself into a pickle because once Jake sees her in the costume, uh, later Lucy says it was her twin sister. <laughs> Mar was it Marianne or Miriam? Miriam. That must have been my twin sister, Marion. Okay, Miriam. She's really embarrassed. So you have a twin sister that dresses up in a giant rabbit costume? Oh, that Marion. She's a little out there. <laughs> Uh, and then we finally, we get we get uh, the 
we get the action. We get what what exactly this film is going to be about because they're offered to go on to a, go onto this trip. Uh, it's going to be Lucy, Miriam, and Miss Diamond and Russ, and they're all going on this trip with Jake and his family. And that's kind of the the kickoff of the movie. The whole beginning was just like, what are we doing here? And now we finally understand. Yeah, it's all leading up to the town's Easter egg hunt because. I guess. And the mom at this point That's keeps what, switching yeah. back and forth between being super cynical. Her whole shtick is like, if I would have wrote this, I would have figured out all the problems. I would have figured out how to have solved this issue. Maybe we should watch The Wizard of Oz or something. Don't get me started. Flying monkeys. They're monkeys. Monkeys can't fly. How does a bunny give things out? Rabbits don't have opposable thumbs. They can't hand anything out. He carries it around in a basket. But then, two seconds later, oh my god, Easter! Let's do all the <laughs> Easter things, and that's how we'll get an Easter spirit! And this is something that they clearly do and look forward to uh, every single year. So I was expecting this to be kind of uh, just extravagant. So we get to the uh, to the camp, per se, right? And then we meet Jake's friends, who aren't very nice. Like, immediate D-bag vibes, well, right? no! Jake's friends gave me this like feeling of like, all right, at first I'm like, oh my God, look at these two douchey kids. And then two seconds later, they're nice again. And then they're mean again. And I'm like, pick, pick, pick a lane. No, you've outgrown us. Okay, you see, I told you, loser. I'm sorry about your dad. Yeah, it sucks, man. Is this one kid who looks like he should be in a 90s bully role, maybe like he picks on the kid with acne. Like, is right. he bad or is he good? Are they friends? Is he gonna turn around and punch Jake in the face? Did he ever, uh, did he ever tell you where he hit it? No. Ah, that sucks even more. No, it doesn't because he didn't do it. Remember, he got set up. I believe you, Jake. Jake may have turned around and punched him in the face because Jake's friends immediately <laughs> started hitting on Lucy, like, <laughs> bad. So, um, Lucy, do you have a sister by any chance? Yeah, she does. A twin sister, um, Marion. Yeah. Really? It was bad. I was like, ugh. And then we get to a point here. Uh, there's a point in this movie where I wanted to express to you that if somebody were to walk into my apartment <laughs> while I was watching this, I could not explain. And it just was super awkward. So now Jennifer Diamond has these teen boys <laughs> role playing. What is a puppy? What is a bunny? And it's just super, super bizarre. Like, if I had family or friends walking while I was watching this, relationships would be tarnished. So that made me even more confused. If these teen <laughs> boys are little D-bags here, why, with no hesitation, are they helping some random woman out to dress up like a bunny and a dog? Well, because one of them was a fan of her books, right? But the other one was just trying to holla at Miriam. That's true. And let's talk about Miriam. Was this the laziest trope of the, Ugh. oh, you have a twin? She barely changed her clothes. Oh, my God. Twin sisters, how am I going to be both? Didn't really change her no. hairstyle. Literally put on glasses. And I kept writing, does Jake not know she's a twin? Or is he not, like letting on that he knows that she's lying the whole time and it kept like changing back and forth because i'm like no jake might just be really stupid and then later on yeah. i'm like nah i think he knows and then the big reveal later on i'm like oh no jake's really stupid you must be marion yep that's me in the flesh <laughs> well, Lu lucy told me all about you that it's really cool that you like easter so much yep my favorite holiday yeah, I had a feeling that Jake was really stupid. Um, well, with that magical chemistry that they shared when they ca first came on screen. <laughs> did you lose someone? Where did you go? Uh, my house. Uh, I wanted to bring up, and if you can splice in a clip right here, Jake's mom, she smokes <laughs> like four packs of Mob Red 100s a day, bro. Like, that voice was something else. Hello. Yeah, I was... So there's a scene later on in the movie. You know how you notice how the tongue was uh. going in and out and reversed? Well, there's a scene I was like, all right. At the very end, when uh, Jake's mom meets up with Miss Diamond, 
She goes, oh, I have a little laryngitis. Oh, actually, we're heading back ourselves. I woke up feeling like I'm coming down with something. I'm losing my voice. I think Jake is saying goodbye to Jasper and Kenny. Then the next scene that you see her in, the laryngitis is completely gone. Her voice is back to her normal smoker's smoker's raspiness. Well, when you gotta go, you gotta go. Yeah, I noticed that it like it got worse, (laughs) and then it was back to how it was, and then. I, and then, Ella, yeah, dude, I don't know. But Jake's mom, so we we finally get why we're here, right? Jake's mom explains what has torn apart her family, the dirty little secret of the, I don't even know what to call it, but the valuable egg. And then we get this really terrible, shaky zoom-in shot of this, like, luxurious egg in the dirt. And so this Fabergé egg, not only do they want to make sure it seems... Fabergé? What the hell is that? Jake, can you go get my book on the Fabergé eggs? It's a it's a very expensive egg. Dude, this egg looked like a potato <laughs> that had been bedazzled by like a fourth grader. But no, no, it did not, bro. It was even hidden in a potato bag. <laughs> so it was. So they get to this point where like, all right, you think in any movie, the hidden object is hidden. You have to bust through right. a wall or dig through something. This hidden Fabergé egg is literally in a hole uncovered in what appears to be one of those potato bags. Uh. The reason we meet Jake's family is Jake's dad went to prison because the cops supposedly thought he's the one who stole this $10 million egg, supposedly. But they arrested Marcus without ever locating the egg, right? They found items used in the museum break-in around our house. (laughs) <laughs> and was able to get away with it. And, well, the cops couldn't have that. He ruined the big event. He stole something priceless. And they searched his home and they found all these tools that would have helped him accomplish yeah. this goal. Well, the cops suck because the freaking yeah. egg is in a hole. This is what destroyed my family. Literally, you you could have, like, tripped over it. Like, it was, it was, it was just... It wasn't hidden, it was just exposed for anyone to see. You could have tripped right over it. Now, you you kind of get the feeling like, all right, Jake's family, I, I bet the dad really, uh, the dad really is innocent. Divorce? Prison. Oh, sorry, awkward. Uh. Well, he, he didn't do it. I mean, he swears he didn't do it. We finally learn who our, um, is it antagonist? Is that the word that I'm after? He's, uh, it's, uh, Jake's mom's new boyfriend. No, he's so not we, a boyfriend. We finally... He is the old neighbor who's in town, and he mysteriously what? left before the incident. Oh, actually, I was in Europe, away in business. My trip had been planned months before that horrible injustice took place. And Beth, if I'd have known, I'm so sorry. I know we didn't do it. I could have sworn they were together. That's that's freaking me out, man. I must have interpreted that well, wrong. Well, they were kind of like, they were half flirting, and he was like, I don't know, he was skeezy as hell. And Oh, dude, yeah. I have a feeling that he's hiding something or maybe hidden something. What do you think? I don't know. Well, that's because the story isn't over yet. Keep watching, and you'll find out. Later on, she thinks that he had interest in Miss Diamond because... You know, this guy just wanted to hang around all the single moms, just like uh, right. What Tom? Uh, what the heck? Phil Hartman's character in Jingle All the Way, how he's hitting on all the moms. Okay, yep, yep, yeah. So anyway, whatever. What was his name again? All right. So this is how I knew he was the bad guy. <laughs> I think his name was Scam Men. But all that talk about Fabergé eggs had given her some new ideas. Ideas that were making Mister Scammon very nervous for some reason. And I was like, scam? Your name is Scam. Uh, you're literally pulling a scam. And you're brilliant, scam man. Brilliant, dude. Brilliant. I love it. That's the type of writing you get in a movie that's 2.6 on IMDb out of 10. I am the Easter Bunny puppy, pooping out Easter bunnies. See, I made a funny hippity hoppity woo. So it gets to this point where they're going to have the big, the big yearly Easter egg hunt, right? And then... Uh, scam man here puts up this sign and it it deters 
everyone else from coming and joining in on the hunt. It says like road closed, find alternate route, whatever it said. And this is how he sets up his ploy to make everybody else go out and look for the actual Easter eggs in the hunt while he himself is on the hunt for the Fabergé egg or the potato. This was the most cartoony part of a movie called an Easter Bunny Puppy. It was just, it was like sepia or black and white. I'm trying to remember. And he's just sneaking up. <laughs> I'm closing up the road. <laughs> yep. And I was like, all right, for most of the movie, he's kept his composure about trying to figure <laughs> out like, hey, do you think you know what Scam it, man. Do you think you know where the egg is? Hey, uh, what are you guys up to? Or... Hey, where's where's well, dude, the dog? This, yeah. And then finally just breaks. <laughs> Nobody's going to go Easter egg hunting now except for the four of us. No, he was like the evil guy in Frosty the Snowman. <laughs> what was he again? Missed, oh, the, the hat. The guy who wants to steal Frosty's hat. With the hat, yeah. yeah. So everybody's off trying to, you know, be on this hunt, right? Uh, Miriam is supposed to be with Jake's friends, but she's nowhere to be found. She's allergic to plastic, we learn. I, I'm allergic to plastic, too. Um, L Lucy is out with Jake. She loves plastic eggs. They're, like, her favorite thing. Well, not her favorite thing. I mean, she likes boys, but, but not just any boy. I mean, she only goes out with the special ones, you know? And everybody but Lucy and Jake have the tiniest baskets. <laughs> like, realistically, <laughs> they could hold maybe five or six plastic eggs. Everyone's off frolicking Miss Diamond's <laughs> off by herself. She probably doesn't even know where she is. And then, then you get the bad guy again. And he has this bootleg cutout map. And he's just like, <laughs> I'm going to find it. I'm going to find it. And meanwhile, we have this other story where the teen boys who were waiting for Miriam are like, all right. Uh, Lucy, you're going with Jake on this hunt. We'll just stay here and wait for Miriam, even though Miriam <laughs> supposedly made a big scene. Why did they make five scary movie movies? I mean, I didn't even like the first one. Gosh, you're not my sister's keeper. Leave me alone. And scared the boys off because they thought she was crazy. I have a date with Jake tomorrow, and nobody's going to want to deal with Miriam because she's a crazy girl. <laughs> Who happens to be you, which makes you super crazy girl. Even though there's a major problem with this plan, and uh, they kind of already mentioned it earlier when they say, oh, teen boys, they'll put up with anything. Yes, Mary Ann yep. slash Lucy is super cute. And I don't see any of the girls around here. Of course they're going to wait around forever. Yeah. <laughs> One of the guy goes, I can be very, very <laughs> persuasive when I want to be. And then yeah. the other guy goes, well, I got her these flowers because I'm so sorry about what I said. I was like, oh, man. And I, I thought she told me that she told you that uh, she wanted to be left alone. Well, we thought we can get her to come with us. I can be pretty convincing when I need to. And that the one kid who got her the flowers, like the whole way through, you're like, oh man, he's, uh, what a nice guy. One of the things that I want to point out, Joe, is that all of these plastic eggs, usually there's money, candy, scratchers, whatever hidden inside. These were all completely empty. All the eggs completely empty. Well, I was wondering, why were they so gung-ho about doing this Easter egg hunt? Like, they couldn't just get their own candy at this point? I would say right. by, like, 12, 13, you're kind of already out of the Easter egg hunting phase there. Yeah, unless there's, like, something super valuable in them, you know what I mean? But they made a big deal, like, this is a big town event, but there's nobody else in the town, so how big is this event? No, because <laughs> our guy... <laughs> And he puts up the sign. <laughs> but if I just went downtown for like a yearly event and everybody knew it was going to happen that weekend and I just moved a few detour signs or anything. All right. Maybe you're yep. screwing up like 10 or 15 people's plans who don't exactly know where they're supposed to be going. But everybody else in the town right. would be like, it's here. It's always here. <laughs> it's always been right there. And then I want to I wanted to also say that this um, this egg hunting montage was entirely too long as well. Like they really love their montages <laughs> in this movie and they milked it. Now, when the montage ends, Russ finds the special egg uh, and Jake doesn't realize it. So he pretty much just yanks on Russ's <laughs> collar, nearly breaks his neck. And Lucy throws on some glasses and now she's Miriam. And as Miriam. She sees that our sad teen boy feels really stupid about trying to hit on her. With the flowers. So she's like, 
Oh my god, you're so sweet, and your friend doesn't know anything about <laughs> girls. I'm gonna go up and give you a no. kiss. <laughs> but it's that oh, sad, yes. like, pity kiss. But Jake sees this, and he's all like, no, no, oh, why? Oh my gosh. So then at that point, I'm like, all right, Jake, do you know if she's Miriam and Lucy, <laughs> or do you not? Because she's still Miriam. Uh, so you, do you know the yeah. truth now? Jake, you're an idiot. Uh, you don't understand. I'm not me. I'm her. I mean, I'm, I, I'm. Uh. Yeah, Jake's an idiot. Um, see, they, they would want you to feel bad for Jake, but just because he's such a dummy, you kind of can't. It's like, dude, you knew. Try telling that to your dog. She doesn't have to. I've known the truth all along. You knew what was going on here. You just refused to admit it, right? Yes, and Jake's going around with a blank stare on his face. Though, for the most part, everybody in this movie goes <laughs> around with a blank stare on their face. And the only one who should be getting yep. away with having a blank stare on their face is Russ, who... As yep. I keep noting here, as we go through this movie, keep saying more and more insulting things about the movie, the person watching yep. this type of movie, what's going on. And then when I thought, all right, Russ, do you do anything besides insult people? This is truly pathetic. He starts rapping. <laughs> oh, God. Did you notice that uh, throughout the movie, Russ would convince you to keep watching? Yes. There was like there was like three or four different occasions where he's like, "Well, trust me, that's gonna happen in the next part, so keep watching." Yeah, he goes, "There was oh, there, he goes, what's an Easter Bunny puppy?" Well, Lucy, and I'm like, "You just asked me the question, and you just started talking about yeah. Lucy now." What is an Easter Bunny puppy? You might ask. What is an Easter Bunny puppy? Thanks for asking. What? <laughs> Well, it all started later that afternoon with an email and a phone call. And then there's parts where he goes, what's going to happen to an Easter Bunny puppy? And then a second narrator starts talking and answers his question. He's like, <laughs> where did this narrator come from? I thought Russ was the narrator. What's an Easter Bunny puppy? What is an Easter Bunny puppy? Where the hell did that come from? <laughs> so essentially, Lucy's busted, right? She's upset that she's busted. Look. I'm sorry, Jasper. You're a really great guy. And I, I didn't want to hurt you, but I really like Jake. Yanks on poor <laughs> Russ's just collar again, this poor dog. Meanwhile, our bad guy, the scam man, right? <laughs> I'm the scam uh, he... man. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, uh, he comes to find out that the, uh, what kind of egg did you call it the again? The Fabergé egg. The $10 million stolen egg. I'm never saying the word Fabergé, okay? The most valuable potato. Uh, Mr. Scam Man finds out that it's missing uh, and that somebody already has it and that somebody happens to be Russ. And you know what our uh, Mr. Scam Man says? You can steal what's been already stolen. <laughs> no, 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 no. This can't be. You can't steal what's already been stolen. It's not fair. Oh, he is a total cartoon uh, character. Then we cut back to Jake's mom, whose voice, as you noted earlier, is getting worse. It sounds like she just got punched in the throat by the Undertaker. Are you okay? Laryngitis. Okay, well, what do you mean? Oh, oh, them? Whatever. Jake, I'm going to find Jake. He's just a little sad right now because the girl he liked. Uh, oh. So yeah, she's in that voice is trying to explain to you what's happening. Lucy and Jake are upset, so so Lucy and Russ are gonna leave with Mrs. Diamond, and eventually they go they go home, right? And Russ has the egg around his neck, but nobody has noticed it for some <laughs> reason, even though it's wrapped in a freaking bag. It's uh it's it's this big potato that's bejeweled, and Russ has it, but Scam Man, he wants to go back to Jake's mom's house so he can then go next door to try to find this uh, this egg. And he's still playing it cool at this point because, I mean, if you can get in and out without blowing your cover, that's perfect, even if this guy's getting more over the top by the second. And she says, I knew you connected with that dog. I knew you liked my friend. Ugh, what a love <laughs> connection. And, and this guy's like, I I don't know. I will... I will sleep with this Karen yeah. woman if, if it helps me yep, get the whatever egg. Whatever it takes. 
because honestly at this point I'm just expecting him to just get pervier by the second he's I don't know if this was uh, home alone this guy would not crack the wet bandits <laughs> <laughs> He'd no, be on the all, Wet dude. Bandit single A squad and risking getting cut. He's that bad at his job. <laughs> Essentially, he, Mr. Scam Man, <laughs> he, he makes it over to the house. And then we get this scene <laughs> where he starts chasing <laughs> Russ around the house and he can't catch him. It looks like a farmer trying to grab a chicken. But <laughs> Russ is just too fast and he's cutting in between his legs and under the bed and over the stairs. And he's, he's got the like, He's going to get drafted high, okay? Maybe high second It was pretty round. good comedy. Yeah, that, that scene was good. And like the whole time, you know, the two women aren't thinking anything of this guy's suspicious behavior now. And they're just like, oh, he just had to use the bathroom. <laughs> That's meant for you. Oh, he's just you. upstairs. Just yep. like my husband that left me, which is something we skipped over because Karen, uh, of right, course, yep. had to reveal that yep. her husband <laughs> cheated on her with a secretary. Had to make it about her. Yep. And that's why she's so miserable. And your dad wanted to be a lazy bum and move to Mexico with his secretary, Roxanne. I know, Mom. You don't have to explain. So we got two single ladies not understanding why this guy is upstairs chasing around their dog. And then... So tell me right now with a straight face, what does this have to do with the Easter Bunny puppy? At some point, he wore Easter Bunny ears. Hey, maybe he's into rabbits. When Lucy was dressed like a bunny. Honestly, at this point, not a whole heck of a lot. <laughs> and then sometimes in the movie, there's an egg... And then there's no egg. What's that all about? At this point, I'm just trying to finish the movie, and I'm thinking, gosh, I know I've been friends with Joe for a long time, but this might be it. I might be done after this. Like, I might have to call it quits, bro. You give me, you give me the strange silent treatment when I was making my notes here, and I was like, uh, oh, no. What kind of effect did this have uh, on him? In fact, I even saved a clip from this movie that I feel like describes how Jeff felt going into this process. Why are you sending this to me? So finally, because true love <laughs> conquers all, even in the time of Easter, Jake- Whoa, 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 slow, slow your roll here, slow your roll here. So Scam Man <laughs> is still chasing after Russ. Russ gets to the top of the stairs and the bejeweled potato, the Fabergé egg, comes just falling over the barricade. Somebody catches it and they go, oh, it was you the whole time. Well, magically, it's, well, it's because Jake arrived, and Jake, for some reason, uh, we skipped the scene between when he was mad that Lucy kissed another guy and ran away pissed off and sad to suddenly being and at the front door. then he shows up in her room. All happy, like, huh, I understand why you did what you did. How? How did you understand that? Who told you that? No. Your friend didn't chase after you. Lucy couldn't explain it to you. And you ran off crying. Now you're cool. You're chill. You're in her bedroom. Okay. And the fact that, I mean, you both are just you makes things better. And they're having a super, yeah, they're having a super awkward conversation because they can't look at each other. So they're like facing back to back as they're conversing. It was super strange, dude. It was super strange to me because I'm pretty sure Russ wanted the two of them to get it on right there because he's sitting there like, when are you going to kiss? When are you going to kiss? When are you going to make out? Lots and lots of kissing directed at you and the thought of it makes me sick. I'll think about it. Oh, she's thinking about it, all right. A little too much. You two want uh, each other, and it's like, on. yo, dog, I <laughs> leave Relax, the room. Pop. Come on. So Mr. Scam Man pulls out the, the tiniest pistol ever, like I said on them. This gun was strangely small. Uh, and then er everybody starts to, like, <laughs> understand what's happening. And this is when where you finally learn what this movie is about, right? Nothing. <laughs> you did it. You stole the Fabergé egg and framed my husband for your crime. Oh, I didn't mean to. I had a stash it somewhere and the police were getting close. Essentially, he pulls out the gun, but then here comes, here comes Russ to save the day. He bites that <laughs> son of a bitch on the leg. It's the Easter Bunny puppy to the rescue. <laughs> Jennifer Diamond, uh, she then takes the gun and pulls it out on him. 
Uh, Lucy then has a new boyfriend. The bad guy's going to jail. Jennifer Diamond has a new story for her next book. And Jake's dad is getting out of prison. Russ saves the day. The end. Thank goodness. And I have the story for my new book. And I have a new boyfriend. And it was all wrapped up with some cool punchlines from the mom holding the gun. Even though, if I was that bad guy, I was thinking, are you like, are you really that intimidated that you wouldn't make a move right here? Do you really think this lady would shoot? Because she didn't uh. seem like that to me. But I'm afraid Mr. Scammon here will be going away for a long, long time. And then no. Ross, oh yeah, I'm the Easter Bunny puppy and I'm pooping and I just got you and I'm the bad guy. <laughs> You're the bad guy. And I was like, and they looped that four times, like in the movie, like that same dialogue. Oh, yeah. Because apparently yep. that was the funniest Absolutely. thing in the script. That's right. I'm the Easter Bunny puppy, punk. Deal with it. Hippity hoppity woof. Peace out. All the kids are going to love that. They're, they're going to be saying it at school. So Easter Puppy came to the rescue, <sighs> and the whole time through, you know, I was, I was looking at the phone. I was like, Jeff's not responding back. I wonder if this damaged him worse than the Mariah Carey Christmas puppy story. Because apparently I'm finding Man. the weirdest dog movies. Is this... Where, uh, where do you put it? Would you rather take Mariah and Jack or Russ and Lucy? Well, let me say this. Corgis are great. I loved Russ. Uh, but as far as... As far as a movie is go, the Mariah one was well, it was animated, so it wasn't as awkward to watch with terrible, terrible actors and actresses. Um, and it was an actual story that actually made sense. <laughs> this made no damn sense in on any planet. You just need to stop looking to explain everything. Sometimes things just happen, and we have to accept it. Anywhere in any galaxy, it was just. Gosh, I think my favorite part about it was what it was over. No, I I had a strange affection for it. Hey, it's me, Robo, and I'm posing like a Playboy model, just like the mom did. Before I met your father, I was almost a bunny, and guys do not find that a turnoff. What are you talking about? Nothing. I saw that this comes from the Talking Cat franchise, and you know you can see John Tron or Riff Track or anyone go into that thing, and I'm like, all right. A talking cat was bad enough. How is there a <laughs> Easter puppy? I think there's a movie called The Halloween Puppy. No, and stop it, dude. We're done. There's like four of it's these. the end of the show. These... We're done. <laughs> uh, I'm a little afraid to go into Halloween Puppy, but if we're low on content, though I don't think we'd be uh. low on content. And boy, every character creeped me out. Like, did it feel like the mom was trying to pimp out her own daughter? And maybe you should let her know that these guys have been waiting here for a really long time to see her. Besides, Marion may need something to wear. I am not getting into that outfit again. Forget it. Like, she was pushing this deception to go on where in most sitcoms, they'd be like, you got to tell the truth. Tell these boys it's just you. And I know it's going to be hard. This mom's like, I need content for my book. Lie to them all. <laughs> but you are not turning me into a bad mother. There is no Marion. There is now. Lie to them. Lie to them and dress up like a bunny. And then I'm going to make them dress up like a, like a dog. And one's going to bark on the floor. Yeah, she was a strange. She was a strange cat, huh? No, she was a strange Easter puppy. Yeah. Oh, God. So I don't know if Easter specials can get any worse. I think you need to watch Peter Cottontail to cleanse yourself from this. Dude, he, I watch Here Comes Peter Cottontail every single year. Uh, it's just like those old school Christmas animation stop motion ones. I love those. And it's such a great story and it's made so well. And dude, I'm just like, I can't believe that I took an hour and a half out of my weekend. Like I'm finally off from work and, uh, I, I can do whatever I want right now, but I spent it watching the Easter bunny puppy. Oh, that's funny. Your sister's wearing the exact same outfit. Yeah. Happens sometimes with twin things. <laughs> and as you're sitting there realizing that you wasted your hour and a half during your precious time off, Russ is sitting there mocking you for watching this movie. <laughs> and you got to yep. try to explain like, yeah, I'm watching a movie right now where I think they're flirting over cheese. I'm not going to say it. It's too cheesy. Okay. Just so you know, I love cheese. <laughs> 
not only did I waste an hour and a half watching the movie, we just spent 40 minutes reviewing it and talking about it. Ru Russ wins. I don't know what else to say. You <laughs> bought this movie? I couldn't find a place to stream it. <laughs> Dude. So wait a minute. You bought this movie and then ripped it and sent it to me? <laughs> yes. Yes, I did. Joe, you can't just you can't just throw that in at the end of the episode like it's not a huge <laughs> deal. You spent four dollars on this movie. <laughs> Let me see it. Pull it up. We're gonna shoot our freaking thumbnail right here and right now. Now we're we're going to pop culture paradise court, Joe. The jury wants to know how much money you spent on this DVD. I think Amazon would say that I spent. Four dollars and sixty-nine cents, something like that, with maybe a dollar thirty-seven of store credit going towards Jeez, it. Jeez, dude, who are you? I don't even know who you are anymore, Joe. I think you're lying. I when, think this. I think when, this makes perfect sense to you. When's the next time you're gonna watch this? Well, now I have a digital copy of it. Look at it. Look at old Russ on the cover here. That's not <laughs> Russ. We don't know who that dog is. It's a cute dog, but that golden is not Russ. Russ is an adorable puppy. You thought he was an old man dog. <laughs> Dude, he was. He was an older dog. He just had the voice of a six-year-old boy. This is not the plot of the movie. This is another lie. The cover's a lie. The description is a lie. Russ, an adorable puppy, wants to be the Easter Bunny this year. No, he did not. <laughs> not at all. But has to contend with his family who thinks that dogs should be dogs and not bunnies. What? No, they didn't. They didn't do anything to dress him <laughs> up other than maybe like Lucy for like half a scene. So is there anything about Scam Man, the bad guy on the uh, description here? There's nothing about a stolen egg. There's nothing about Jake. There's nothing about a murder mystery <sighs> mom. There's nothing about an egg hunt. Apparently, this was supposed to be about a dog <laughs> who wants to be a bunny. No, it wasn't. Joe, have you ever filmed something, right? And you intended, you had every good intention of the world for it to be one particular type of thing. But then when you're done with it and it's all edited, it's not even close to what you intended for it to be. Yes. That's exactly what this movie is, but they just rolled with it. But when that happens, and I go to upload it and add a description, I write what the new movie is about and what the description fit. So the Nah, they didn't have time for that, bro. They didn't have any time for that. Yeah, I'm making an Elf on a Shelf video that's going to come out around Christmas, and it's close to what I intended. But, you know, you have to make changes with what you're given. And right. I certainly respect how low budget and them just wanting to make a movie. But go back and fix a few things. Oh, my goodness. You know what was great is when the actual the cover that you just showed was in the actual was in the movie. <laughs> oh, my God. Yes. <laughs> and like they're holding the poster and she's like, yep. An Easter buddy puppy. How would I write what? something like that? Don't you know what? we're Jewish? I don't know anything about Easter. We're Jewish. Okay, well, on Easter, the Easter bunny hops around giving things out to boys and girls, like Easter eggs and jelly beans and chocolates. All right, she just became <laughs> crying there all of a sudden. She just <laughs> did real quick. Shredder, don't you know we celebrate Hanukkah? You know what? Russ is awesome. Now, if they want to see us talk about another Easter special on another day. <sighs> Joe, you're assuming that people are going to want more of this after sitting through this? People love this type of crap. If you say so. If you enjoyed it, uh, please like, share, and comment. All three if you're up for it. Uh, for Joe, I'm Jeff. I'm frazzled right now. <laughs> this is Pop Culture Paradise. And uh, we'll catch you next time. Hey, that ad revenue could pay for the $4 that I spent to buy this off Amazon. I'll catch you later. I'm off to hop along the bunny trail.